Hey everyone, this is Nathan Williams with BlackRain79.com and today I'm going to tell you my top five best poker games for beginners. Now these are going to be the best poker games for you guys that are just starting out in the game. Uh, what I mean by that is the most profitable, the most easy to learn, and the most easy to beat. Now make sure you guys stick around until the end because I'm also going to give you my top three keys to success for poker beginners. All right, let's jump right into it. So my first best poker game for beginners is going to be six max cash games. Now, why six max? Well, let me define first what six max and cash games are. Well, six max, just like the name implies, is going to be a poker table with six players on it. And cash games are a form of poker where you bring your own money to the table. You typically are going to be using chips, which hold the exact same value. The blinds never increase, unlike a tournament, which I'm going to discuss later in this list. And basically you just sit around and you try to increase your profit. So if you brought $100 to the table, for instance, uh, if you leave with anything above $100, that's a winning day. And anything below $100, it's a losing day. There's no first place, second place. This is why they call it a cash game. It's just money in, money out. Now, why do I suggest six max instead of nine max, like you might've seen in a casino or even online? Well, the reason why I'm suggesting six max games these days is because they're simply more popular. More people are playing them online. Back when I was first starting out many years ago, nine max or full ring was definitely the game that people were playing, but six max is more popular these days. That's gonna give you more games to play in, more fish to, to find, and ultimately more success. And lastly, why do I suggest cash games over some other formats on this list that I'm gonna get into? Well, the reason why not only am I a cash game specialist, but I truly believe number one is the most popular form of poker. And ultimately it's the easiest for a beginner to get into because it's the most steadiest profit. You will have losing days in cash games. It's impossible. There's no games on this list where you're not gonna have losing days. It's just not part of the game. The game of poker just inherently has day-to-day uh, -day ups and downs. But cash games have the smoothest graph. You're going to make the most consistent money in these games. And so that's why I suggest them as my number one game for poker beginners. All right, so number two on the list is gonna be multi-table tournaments. Now, probably a lot of you guys that are just starting out in poker already play these games. Probably a lot of the poker that you've seen on YouTube or on TV involves this with famous players like Daniel Negreanu or Phil Hellmuth. And that is because multi-table tournaments uh, are the most exciting brand of poker. These are the games where, you know, th there's gonna be a million dollar final table, the, the gold bracelet that you might have seen with the World Series of Poker. And I will say that also this game, uh, tournaments tend to attract the biggest uh, recreational players, as we call fish, uh, because of that, the lure of the big money. Now, what is the drawback to tournaments? Well. The drawback to tournaments is they don't feature a lot of consistent money like cash games, and that is because you need to get very lucky uh, again and again in a short period of time in order to win a poker tournament. All the money in poker tournaments is on the final table and specifically first, second, and third. So while I do suggest cash games over tournaments, I do think that tournaments are also an excellent choice for poker beginners uh, because they're the most exciting form of poker and it's a chance to get a big, big score, uh, which is a big draw for a lot of people, including myself. All right, so number three on the list is gonna be sit and goes. Uh, you're gonna find these online a lot and sit and goes are basically, they're just like a tournament uh, where the blinds are increasing and you're looking to, uh, to win first, second or third primarily, like I mentioned. The difference between sit and goes is that typically it's just one, two or three tables basically. So, and that means that the entire tournament is often over in about uh, 20 or 30 minutes as well. So you don't have to, you know, spend an entire afternoon playing them. So with sit and goes, the, uh, the strategy is similar to tournaments. You're looking to survive and ultimately uh, place in, in the top three. And I do think that there's a good amount of profit for most beginners in these games. All right, so number four on my list is gonna be Zoom poker games. And these have become, this is also called fast fold poker. And, and these are mostly online, I should, I should say. Um, you're not going to find these games in uh, at, a, at the casino, but basically uh, it's got different names like Fast Forward, Blaze, Snap, Rush, all sorts of stuff on different sites. And basically it is a, a new brand of poker that's been around for a while. Fold your hand right away and it's going to move you to another table with a new hand right away. And it just increases the speed of the game uh, almost exponentially. It's, it's a lot faster than any poker game 
you're used to. This brand of poker has become very popular, especially with recreational players. Also with people that just want to play a lot of hands, want to jump on the tables right away and dive right into the action. Now the drawbacks of Zoom Poker, as I actually discussed in a video just a couple weeks ago, I'll put the link right there, is that these games do tend to play pretty tight and therefore, you know, it's hard to get a lot of loose action. And therefore they become what some people call nit fests where everyone's just sitting around waiting for aces, kings and sets and, you know, strong hands like that. But Overall, I do think that Zoom is still a good option for most beginners. It's a good way to get yourself into the game. A lot of recreational players really like this format, like I said, because of the convenience. By the way, if you guys are finding this video helpful, the only thing I ask is that you shove all in on that like button and also subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more poker videos just like this. All right, so my final best poker game for beginners is gonna be Pot Limit Omaha. Now this is different from No Limit Hold'em as I've been discussing uh, previously. Now Pot Limit Omaha is gonna be different than probably the poker that you've played. You've probably played No Limit Hold'em primarily, which is a game where you have two cards dealt to you face down. Pot Limit Omaha is different in that you get four cards. This creates a lot more action. There's a lot more gambling in the game. Uh, there's, it's a lot more swingy. And for a lot of people, they really enjoy this format. I actually like stepping into these games from time to time myself as well. And you can go on some insane heaters and you know some equally uh, tough downswings. Overall, one of the biggest draws for Potlum Omaha for me is that not as many people play it as compared to No Limit Hold'em and therefore the level of understanding, the level of strategy is not as high, and therefore, you know, if you become a reasonably competent player at Pump Limit Omaha, you're probably going to have a more significant advantage over most people than you would in No Limit Hold'em, which is a game that people have studied a lot more and gotten a lot better at. I should say that this goes for a lot of other forms of poker as well. There's a lot of popular stuff like short deck hold'em these days, uh, stud games, any, any games that people don't play a lot. I, I will say that, you know, if you choose to specialize those in a beginner, it's going to allow you to get to a, a, a more competent level a lot faster just because uh, everybody else plays pretty poorly in these games. All right, guys, so those are my top five best poker games for beginners. So as I mentioned off the top, I'm gonna give you guys now my top three keys to success for poker beginners to get you guys making big profits in this game as quickly as possible. All right, so tip number one, I've mentioned it many times before, is I recommend a basic tag strategy. Now, tag stands for tight and aggressive. It's something that I talk about in my free poker cheat sheet, which I'll leave a link to right here. It's also the top link in the description below. And it's basically a strategy which involves being fairly selective with the hands you decide to play, paying close attention to your position at the poker table, and also applying a lot of pressure after the flop on the flop turn and river, and basically the reason why this strategy works so well is, is because it, it puts a lot of sustained pressure on your opponents. They know you're only playing a good hand. Most of the time you're gonna have position on them, which means you're getting to act last, which is a huge advantage in poker that for you beginners watching this video, you wanna be playing as much as possible around on spots like the button and the cutoff specifically. Again, this is stuff that I talk about in my free poker cheat sheet and in my poker books you can find on my website. But overall, I suggest learning this bare bones kind of strategy. It's, this is what's gonna help you find quick success in all of the games that I already mentioned on this list. So my second key to success for poker beginners is all about game selection. Now what's game selection, you're gonna ask? What I mean by game selection is finding the tables with the bad players. Guys, you need to understand, if you're new to poker, you need to understand that the biggest difference between poker and all other, other casino poker games is that you're playing against other people. And that's why poker is so popular and, and it's a skill-based game over the long run where people can play for a significant part-time income or even a full-time income like I've done myself for many years. The beautiful thing about poker is you don't have to be the best poker player in the world in order to have success at it. You don't even have to be that good. All you need to do is consistently play against people who are worse than you. So how do you do this? Well, I mean, the number one thing is just to observe the table. Look for people that are playing passively by limping a lot pre-flop, uh, by making small bets, by calling down with all sorts of weak draws and, and bottom pair and stuff like that, playing too many hands. 
basically all of the classic signs of a recreational player. This is something I've talked about many times in these videos and my poker books. These are the kind of players you wanna be looking out for. Now, now, if you play online poker and you use a HUD like Poker Tracker, for instance, I'll have links, by the way, in the description below for how to get it on your screen. It puts numbers on your online poker table and you can just look for the guys that are playing 40% or more of their hands. This is called VPIP and Poker Tracker. Once again, all the information on that is in the, in the description below. And so my third and final key to success for poker beginners is all about tilt control, guys. Guys, the biggest challenge of poker, especially for new poker players like yourself, is being able to handle the constant ups and downs of the game. Like I mentioned before, nobody wins every day in poker. There's always ups and downs. Even if your name is Dan Inagrano or Phil Helmuth, these guys have losing days too. So what you need to be able to do when the cards are not going your way is to recognize the signs of when you're starting to feel frustrated because it leads to bad play. And what you need to be doing in that situation is being able to remove yourself from the table, understanding you're not playing your best, recognize that poker is a long-term game. We're not in this for the results of days or even weeks. You know, we're looking at the long run which is gonna mean the results that matter for you are the ones over months and years specifically. So one of the biggest keys to your success, even more important than your strategy at the tables is having the mental wherewithal to either control your tilt in the moment when you start getting bad beats and coolers or simply leave the poker table if you're not able to control your emotions. All right guys, so that's about all I got for this one. Once again, if you found this video helpful in any way, all I ask is that you just shove all in on that like button, it helps me out. And also make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel here as I'm putting out new poker videos just like this to help you guys out every single week. And finally, I will leave a video that I recently made up here, which I think will help you guys out at the poker table. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. This has been Nathan Williams with BlackRain79.com. Thank you.